Africa, equipping its population to be active contributors to the global tech ecosystem. I'm here to find out. If people are not being taken along in terms of digit, digital literacy, in terms of their capacity, in terms of uh, connectivity of internet, in terms of usage of smart devices, then you know there will be a lot of people which will be who will be left behind. As we are opening up the space for more and more people to become digitally connected, we must ensure that there is a legal and regulatory framework that is also protecting them. So we also need to make sure that we help protecting corporates by making sure that we build capacity within the country so that they are able to help based on the context of organization as well as a local context as Malawi. Access to devices is a big issue. Um, the cost, and if it's not about the cost, it's the sustainability of once you have a device, how do you, how, how do you use it? How do you also make sure that you can continue to have one, all right. I go by the name of Clarence Gama, and I'm the president of the ICT Association of Malawi, ICTAM. So, I want to explore how Africa is equipping the global tech ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to give tools and skills and abilities to our uh, very young work um, force, mm -hmm. which are averaging soon to be 19 years old, okay. the biggest literally average, the youngest average um, number of the workforce around the world. Yeah. How are we going to equip them not to be just on farms, but actually be in front of a computer and contributing to the global tech ecosystem? One of our very first initiatives uh, a couple of years ago when I became president is that we spoke to the Ministry of Finance in Malawi to say, well, what if we could review the taxing that the taxes that are associated with bringing in devices in the country? That way we could make devices affordable to more people. Secondly, is um, the issue of skills. Give them, we can give young people a computer, but we've got to enable them to use it wisely. Not abuse it, not destroy it, but use it to be able to do more and do something more impactful, something positive, which if not managed properly, we could be increasing cyber crimes, we could be increasing cyber bullying, but really we need to train and teach people uh, digital skills and how they can benefit from that or how to use that for the for good. My journey begins in South Africa, one of the continent's most developed countries and will continue to Malawi, a developing country. This is to gain a broader perspective of how Africa is rising to the challenge. The dream is an Africa that is regarded as an exporter of innovation as opposed to just a consumer of it. I was a trained journalist with a passion for storytelling, but I wasn't making an income from it and I knew I needed a change. I spent my time doing everything from online courses to workshops and tutorials. But I'm lucky that this type of career switch is pretty common in the West. We have a lot of opportunities and resources to help us make these transitions. In Africa, it's a whole different story. Young people here face many barriers when they're entering the tech industry or switching careers. The digital divide is huge and there aren't that many training programs or job opportunities. Africans can't afford basic technology. This digital divide is huge and has far-reaching consequences. So if I'm in Malawi, I live in a village. Right now there's 50% uh, of the population living in poverty, 25% uh, in extreme poverty. How does a village boy get to where you are? The first thing is uh, we need to make sure that there is an awareness to say that what is out there. Because if they, somebody don't know, you're going to pursue anything which you don't know. So people have to be aware to say that uh, there is this profession which you can pursue. And also using technology. Currently, you can learn via TikTok. People are doing short, short five minutes, uh, you know, pods whereby they can, uh, uh, you can learn something on that. YouTube, you can find a lot of trainings on YouTube which you can learn. I think we have all the platforms, you know, which we can use to learn. So it's just an issue of passion and also getting proper mentors who can direct you to say that if what you are looking for, if your passion, 
I think take this direction because at the end of the day, not everyone can be like me, but there are some who can even be better than me, but based on whatever their passion is all about. The World Bank found that mobile broadband can make a big difference. In Nigeria, after two years of coverage, extreme poverty dropped by 7%, mostly because more people could work. But there's some good news. The HB Cambridge Fellowship is working to improve digital learning for 120 million kids across 11 African countries. So it seems countries are doing their bit to help upskill their young people. Moses, the co-founder of Direct Ed, talks to me about how his bootcamp trains young people and offers them remote working from companies around the world. What we're doing is that we are transforming the tech landscape in Africa. And uh, we are doing so by identifying and uh, equipping the brilliant young talent in Africa with the most sought after digital in the market. And we are mainly focusing on software uh, development. So we train them on software development. But, uh, and right now we have three tracks that we are training them on. We have generative AI, you have UX design, and we also have full stack web development. But also we're not only equipping them, but we are also linking them with global opportunities as soon as they're done with our bootcamp. In terms of internet penetration, um, the ITU uh, uh, rates us at 37.9%. Uh, we have moved from 18% uh, in 2020. So in the past three years, we've almost doubled our internet penetration. Um, that is speaking to the demographic of uh, what Malawi is. We are 20% urban, 80% rural. And out of 21 million, uh, that begins to shape where these 37.9% people are. It tells you that mostly it's the urban folks. So the urban folks that are living in towns, those have been properly connected. It's now the guys that are in the rural areas that are making the 78%, which we now need to start looking into to ensure that we achieve universal digitalization. The only issue that we now have is the cost of devices. Uh, a lot of people that, um, that, that are still connected on 2G uh, that are using feature phones in Malawi, we call them Mosewari. Uh, there are a lot of those that would want to graduate to now become digitally connected. Now, the cost of smart devices is the next barrier that we would love to deal with. So in the next four years, we want to move from the 37.9% to hit 65%. So we want to double that. And the only way we can achieve that leap is ensuring that smart devices are in as many hands as possible in the rural areas of Malawi. How are you going to do that? Do you know? Yes. Uh, so one of, the, one of the major contributing factors to the high cost of devices are taxes and levies. So we understand that taxes and levies are a source of revenue for central government. But we are also seeing that the more we push uh, more people into the digital space, the more new digital revenue the central government is going to gain. Therefore, it is a win-win situation. But there's a tough decision that has to be made, and that tough decision is around a tax break. So we are proposing and we are pushing for a two-year to three-year tax, uh, tax break on all smart devices that come into the country. Uh, a few studies have shown that about 60% of the final cost of a smart device in Malawi is, uh, is made up of taxes and levies and all of that. If we take that out, we think that we can get many devices into more people as one, as one option. The second option is to ensure that we are doing local assembly of devices in Malawi. So instead of us importing a fully assembled device, we would want to import uh, uh, components and then use technical colleges to assemble these uh, devices, hoping that when they are locally assembled, their cost will not be as high as those that have come in. So those two, we believe, uh, are, are initiatives and their, their strategies that will help us to push in more smart devices and surfaces to more people in Malawi. Better internet access leads to more productivity and jobs. It can even help governments provide better services. But even if we fix the tech access problem, there's another big issue holding Africa back. In African workplaces, there's often this idea that older people are automatically better qualified. 
talent and skills are often overlooked in favour of age, which can be really frustrating for younger workers. Nepotism is also a big issue in many African countries. If you've got family connections or know the right people, you're more likely to get a job even if you're not the best fit. In South Africa, the legacy of apartheid still affects hiring practices, with some companies prioritising racial or family ties over skills when making hiring decisions. Changing these deeply rooted cultural norms isn't easy, but it's crucial for economic growth and creating more opportunities for young people. The good news is some companies are starting to push back. They're implementing very transparent hiring processes where they're focusing on skills and qualifications. Despite these challenges, I'm pretty optimistic about Africa's job market and its contribution to the global tech ecosystem. There are solutions out there, and with more widespread adoption, we could see some positive changes. I'm in Malawi, and I've visited a place called NextGen Labs, and I'm really excited about this conversation because we're going to explore how we're upskilling our next youth, next generation to get into tech. So, can you tell me about a bit about yourself and actually why you established this place, um, these, the, these labs? Um, so I'm Eugene, I was born and raised in Malawi. Um, so I think after finishing college, um, I started a drone startup. Um, I did that for about six years and with that I got to travel and meet a lot of people. But the one thing that was apparent to me is that there isn't a lot of youth or young people working in emerging technologies, right? Um, like robotics that I was working in at the time. And I thought, um, more has to be done to find a way for more young people to be in emerging technologies, but also having more solutions um, being developed locally. And so in 2021, um, I set up and uh, uh, founded uh, NextGen Labs to be more of like an innovation lab that isn't limited to any one technology, but can solve problems for many different industries using uh, a lot of emerging technologies like AI, machine learning, Internet of Things, and, and many others. Have you been able to place anyone in a job yet? Placing a job? I mean, we've created jobs. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've created jobs um, since we started. I think when we started, it was a team of four, and now we are slightly just under 20. Um, there's what's, what's interesting about that is that we are, um, I like to think of it as the things that the the students and the kids learn here, which um, are industries and fields that might not necessarily exist yet in Malawi or in this part of the world, like digital art, animation, blockchain developer, game developer, are things that we are building internally and also solving problems for. So I think we were the first to come up with um, VR, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, extended reality solutions in the country. Yeah, there have been many players afterwards, but we were the first ones to, to the market with that. And so I feel like we are creating industries of the future that should exist in a few years. Um, so we do that through our education, but also while working at the same time on creating the market for those uh, young people to work in in a few years. If you don't have a degree, in IT, then somebody probably won't give you a job, right? Yeah. So what's the number one thing that we need to do to change mindsets of um, fluid tech, I call it, I guess, of allowing people to come in and out of certain disciplines in tech and allow them that space to have impact? Different boot camps, accelerators, um, incubators for, for, different, um, for different groups. The way that I see it is, um, if there was more flexible funding where, you know, young people are not scared to try out things, you know, because you finish college, you, you get your degree and then now you go look for a job. And the way things are set up here, you're not, there's no real incentive to, to start out in business or try and solve problems, right? Um, but we need to kind of create that kind of ecosystem, an ecosystem of mentors, of angel investors, of VC, VC, VC funds, of, you know, the whole the whole the whole network you know because usually some someone will attend one program and then that's it you know but if we're going to be serious about setting up start having serious startups um similar to other countries around us then we need to be more intentional about about those type of things um companies having hackathons and challenges to invite young people to solve their problems you know and then maybe the best talent gets hired and 
um, they will buy the solutions that have been developed, you know. So we need to be more intentional about about that. I think that's how we, we get to, to that place. The Digital Economy for Africa initiative aims to connect the entire continent to broadband by 2030, which could create countless job opportunities. We're in the early stages, but the results are encouraging. People are learning new skills, getting connected, finding and creating jobs that they didn't think were possible. Seeing all this progress inspires me to take action. One of my goals is to connect tech boot camps to African youths, making them easily accessible to people who want to break into tech. This will bridge the gap between experienced professionals and aspiring talent. We can all contribute to positive change, no matter how small our efforts might seem. If you'd like to be part of Africa's digital future, I'd love to hear from you. Please contact me for more information on how we can work together. With these initiatives and collective effort, we're paving the way for a more connected and more prosperous Africa. Africa.